Oh, eh, borobol si mentok kebingan di tempat mampu. Oh, gua nggak usah nih, lanangan di tempat mampu. Nimbula, ayo Mr. Ben. Enya apa? Nah, bagi kira menolak kini dia lebih matakan moni chicken atau fagor rumbuka. Enya bula FM, nama dua ada seling. How would you like to spend your morning? You could spend your morning like this. Or you could spend it like this. Tune in to the morning ride every weekday morning from 9 a.m. till 12 p.m. right here on Today FM Today Seat Music. Tonight, 50 families offered cash to relocate. Increase in bushfires worry authorities. And positive results to brucellosis battle. Good evening, I'm Jackie Spate and you're watching FBC News. 50 families of Namara settlement along Kalsa outside Suva have been offered $10,000 each by the housing authority to vacate the land. The decision was a result of increasing demand for housing in the Central Division, which according to the authority is reaching a critical point. Make along with this exclusive story. 69-year-old Taiwani Manilulu came here in 1960 and this has been a very painful experience for him. I don't know what, uh, I don't know what reason I... But you are happy. You are happy moving out from here. Not so very happy. You know, a housing told us if you not do this, and uh, we will do something again. The last thing we want to do is to move people out without providing them any sort of backup plan. I'm told this is the seventh house in this community to go down. And there are other homes here that have accepted the offer from housing authority and will be dismantled in the next few days. We have accepted and we will be tearing down our house next week. The $10,000 allocation that's been given out to uh, these 50 families is in line with helping them dismantle uh, their current properties. Then it's to allow them to transport uh, their, their property towards uh, the new location that they've set up in. There will be points where they'll need to uh, buy new timber or, or buy new plyboard or more nails. The land is in the parcel of land leased to housing authority by the Matangale Noavato of Kalambu for residential development. And already, people have secured lots here. But some, like Tomururu, aren't shaken by housing authorities' decision. Our being here, if we follow another course, we will win this place. For the past few weeks, we have been negotiating with these families, and we are exhausting all avenues. Development such as this is closing in into this settlement, and what's left of it now are homes sitting on an island. And it's the time for these residents here to seriously think about the offer by the housing authority. Mikolonga, FBC News. Authorities are now concerned with the recent and sudden increase in bushfires in the Western Division. With the current spell of dry weather experience there, authorities are now cautioning the public to refrain from lighting fires, even if it's to burn rubbish. In the last week alone, there have been up to five bushfire reports per day. Akusita Tale reports even residents are now worried. Fire stations in the West have responded to almost five bushfire calls per day in the last week alone. The worry now is that if this continues, a far worse scenario may arise as the hot weather continues. If we are not careful, um, then there could be one that uh, becomes devastating, eh? uh, which destroys properties. Residents in the West are now worried, and they have a right to be. This family in Martin Tarnamaka watched helplessly as a fire spreads around their home. Yes, a lot of smoke it came through the came through the two buildings, and it was very strong. We had a baby in the house, so we had to take the baby out of the house because it was choking from the fire. Bushfires are becoming more prevalent in this area in Nandi. Today, another incident which the NFA had to attend to. We just have one, one fire truck in each station, eh? and uh, depending on where we get the calls, we won't be able to respond to all bush and grass fires, and that's the worry that we have. Eh? Apart from that, uh, it's the, our ability to respond to property fires. 
uh, in cases uh, of responding to this fire. Despite numerous advisories, it seems some people continue to be complacent, not realizing the danger a small fire can lead to. It's because of this that the NFA has roped in police to start penalizing those caught for causing such fires. Akusita Tale, FBC News. The fight against brucellosis is progressing well with news of a huge drop in the incidence rate. The Agriculture Ministry is now ready for its eradication program. Epelito Kowasa reports. Work on trying to completely eradicate brucellosis is progressing well after its outbreak in June 2009. We've managed to reduce the, uh, the incidence level uh, for, uh, for brucellosis. Uh, it's below 1% uh, compared to the 4.4% we had. Uh. It's been a long battle for the ministry who have implemented numerous programs in an attempt to contain the spread of the disease. Uh, that's good news and uh, again, as I said, we are trying to control the spread of uh, brucellosis and also for TB. Uh, but we are working on a program that we can uh, start uh, some eradication program in the distant future. While reducing the incident rate is good news, there's still a major task ahead. This program will require a lot more cost and it is going to require a few other areas that we will need to address uh, in terms of uh, the legality of uh, how the operation is done. Uh, we are working on how we can uh, develop a, uh, a very well-constructed uh, eradication program. The ISOI hopes that the eradication program will have positive results that will put an end to the disease that has had devastating effects on the dairy industry. Epeli Tukwasa, FBC News. The European Union has welcomed the Fijian government's electoral process and the assent given to the constitution by the President Ratu Epeli Nailatikau last week. Speaking in Laotoka today, EU Ambassador to Fiji Andrew Jacobs said the EU was happy with how Fiji has moved towards democracy. He added they're all looking forward to elections next year. He also repeated an offer of, a, of an observe, observer team from the EU to be part of the elections in September 2014, if invited by the Fijian government. The EU is awaiting the government's response. Shipping companies have identified the high cost of fuel as one of the major expense to Fiji shipping industry. Meanwhile, there's hope that incentives will be introduced as the Transport Ministry finalizes its review of Fiji shipping franchise. Vusita Kotawasawasa reports. Shipping plays a vital role in linking those in the outer islands to resources on the mainland. And while business may seem like it's booming, there are concerns, in particular the high cost of fuel. The government should look at the incentives that should be given to the shipping companies. The fuel cost is a killer. As you know, going to shipping, the, uh, it's 83 percent of our operating costs is fuel. The same sentiments have been shared by Consort Shipping. Uh, freight rates and passenger rates have been frozen for more than 20 odd years. And uh, one of the biggest uh, factors that shipping industries in Fiji are facing is the fluctuation of fuel prices and the high amount of fuel prices that uh, we are paying. In what may be good news for shipping companies, their plight has been considered. We will review the, the scheme of the current routes that we, routes that we have, also with the current, um, the current uh, contract prices that we have in place. Uh, we must bear in mind that uh, in terms of transport, about 70 to 80 percent of your cost is in the, in the fuel cost. Eh? Luke and Isara says a huge challenge for them is ensuring that all parties benefit from the review. The next step for the ministry is to get public consultations, which is expected to happen soon. Vasita Kotewasawasa, FBC News. After the break, police briefed on constitution provisions. Isambulu Binaka. Nadang gawa di sur ini lagi, nama kau mana yang sedang ngobrol tak kena lali ni kabi, mana tolu kena bitu, enam moni tinggal nampak rombuka, enam bula FM, nampak dua enam seri. Bula, I'm Wame. Join me every weekday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. on the Center Show with classic hits from the 70s as well as the 80s, right here on Gold FM. Welcome back. You're watching FBC News. 
People in Wailevu have commended the opening of the Lambasa Muslim College Telecenter, providing free internet access to more than 3,000 members of the community and 376 students. The Telecenter was opened today by the Prime Minister Wurengen Bainimarama. The head of government also opened another telecenter at Savu Savu Secondary School today, making it the 15th telecenter operating countrywide so far. Well, Suicide Prevention Day was observed yesterday. A light a candle memorial vigil, organized last night by the group Youth Champs for Mental Health, remembered those who died by suicide and those who survived, as well as raising awareness of what can be done to prevent suicide. In Fiji last year alone, nearly 10 cases of suicide were reported every month, with around 15 or more attempted cases of suicide being reported. These figures do not reflect the many unreported cases happening around the country. This year's theme for World Suicide Prevention Day was Stigma, Break the Barrier to Suicide Prevention. Construction of the $3 million-plus backup meteorology office in Suva is expected to be completed before Fiji enters its cyclone season. This is a requirement by the World Meteorological Organization and International Civil Aviation Association. Ritika Pratap reports. If the Nandi weather office goes down, there has to be a backup. This is an international requirement, and according to the MET office, the backup will be up and running soon to ensure 24-7 operations if the need arises. That is for, for ISO and QMS. A backup for tropical cyclone services, for national weather services in Fiji, uh, regional forecast services for the, for the region, for the Pacific, as well as tropical cyclones, support for hydrology and, uh, and civil aviation. This office will be doing similar operations as the Nandi office, but on a smaller scale. Just like a replica of Nandi, what's available in Nandi, that's what's going to be available here as a backup. The building is expected to be ready by next month. Uh, the building, building completed, as well as the uh, fittings inside, including um, uh, the computing infrastructure, the office equipment. We should be in business before the cyclone season. The construction of the building is fully funded by the government. Ritika Pratap, FBC News. Senior police officers, along with Police Commissioner Iowane Naivalurua, were taken through the new constitution today to better understand its provisions. The workshop, which ended this afternoon, was organized by former High Court Judge Madam Nazat Shamim. Chanel Sivan reports. Addressing more than 60 participants, Brigadier General Iowane Naivalurua called on his officers to thoroughly understand Fiji's supreme law. I'm not here this morning to seek your endorsement on this one here, or to seek your views on this constitution. This is now the supreme law and this is the law that is going to guide Fiji, Fijians, everybody that call Fiji their home and you and I as the custodians of law and honor. The session this morning allowed officers to better understand the constitution and how it guides them in their line of duty. This is a document or a book, whatever you may call it, that the commissioner right up to the most junior person should know. Everybody should be able to understand from page one right up to the last page. I also have intentions, I intend to, in the next few months, to test you <coughs> in your understanding of this constitution. Former High Court Judge Madam Nazad Samim explained the contents of the constitution in detail, challenging participants to share their knowledge in their various divisions. In the constitution is six the Fiji Police Force is the first organization to take this proactive step of creating awareness about Fiji's supreme law. Shanal Shivan, FBC News. The National Fire Authority is reviewing its legislation to broaden its role in emergency and management services. NFA CEO John O'Connor says the review will see the National Fire Service have extensive regulatory powers. The review of the legislation will be a comprehensive one. The initial act was done in 1994, and there were a few amendments in 2007 and 2009, eh? so, but it's been addressed at piecemeal. Eh? The current legislation focuses more on firefighting within town and country boundaries. We're now providing ambulance service, we're now attending to road accident rescues, eh? we're now attending to hazardous and uh, incidents, hazardous and chemical incidents, uh, we assist uh, 
NDMO in times of disaster in rescue, flood water, swift water, eh? evacuation. So our role is broadened. Eh? Members of the public will be able to make submissions on what the legislation should look like. Public consultations will also be held next month. The NFA wants new regulatory provisions to have some control and set standards for firefighting equipment to make sure they are workable. We have a lot of uh, complaints from fire agents, eh? from customers in relation to fire agents. Eh? We have also complaints in relation to substandard firefighting equipment such as extinguishers and everything. Eh? Our firefighters want the best legislation which is of international standard and one that will give them power to be tough on those who are ignorant of fire safety practices. NFA's intentions are clear. It wants a proper system in place like having a regulation on fire permit and levies as well. A draft legislation is expected to be ready by November. Mikalonga, FBC News. Time for sports now. And Jamie, what's the latest? Well, up ahead, we take a look at the FNR Rail's preparations for the Battle of the Mbati next week. Mind you, Jack, when you think about the players that's going to play next week, it's going to be a great game to watch. I reckon. Will the match be played in Suva? Yep, those lucky enough will get to see our homegrown boys take on the stars of the Australian NRL down at the ANZ Stadium. We'll have more details of this after the break and the latest updates from the mini games. Stay with us. Namaste, dosto. Mirchi Raftan se Maya Shnil Singh. Shamil ho jaiye hamare saath Monday to Friday from 3 to 7 p.m. Nimbula, me dango ni milote na isorotumbua. Namu kia umi norua kina ona na vya kavi muni te kina vaka rombuka. Rongo me na vya sama kina vya boko baro taki ni ndreko malolo. Eno ridi ufiji wana na wongani vya ni ano. Ngai nama kia kina. Welcome back to FBC Sports. First up tonight, the Fiji Sevens team has been beaten 31-12 by Samoa in the final of the Pacific Mini Games in Wallace and Futuna. This sees the side settle for the silver medal. Early in the day, Samoa also beat Fiji in the round robin competition 19-12. Still with the Sevens side, not, not opting to get players from the extended squad and making the trip to the Pacific Mini Games in Wallace and Futuna has taken its toll on the players. Moshese Sauni Bonua was injured in the first game and other players were either strapped or bandaged. It seems Fiji's problems when it comes to Sevens tournaments are never ending. Shelvin Chand has more. Papua New Guinea started asking questions about Fiji's defence and the Samoans manipulated it and handed Fiji their first loss today. This is what the management had to say. Well, but the boys believe in themselves that they can do the job. Even though they know the situation that we had, um, we try a few areas, but there are a lot of confusion on some of these laws, so we believe that uh, they have to take it to themselves. Players were injured in attempts to get hurdler Johnny Waningolo and weightlifter Tev Tatawai to be used as reserves proved futile. The confusion between the two things uh, in which uh, we were told that we could, but it had to be approved by the Federation. But it... The management says Fijian players are known for their die-hard attitude and their belief in prayers. If the scenario in the Pacific Mini Games is a prelude to the IRB7 series, then Fiji is in for a bumpy ride. Shalvin Chan, FBC Sports. The Fiji women's volleyball team won the bronze medal this afternoon in the Pacific Mini Games by defeating Papua New Guinea three sets to one. Fiji started strongly, took out the first set, but then slumped in the second, allowing PNG to capitalize on the mistakes. After a brief talk by coach Kenny Lindise, the team came back determined and won the next two sets. According to the coach, this win will go a long way in the development of the team. 
mentioned earlier, this is uh, pretty much uh, a, new, a new look team from uh, the normal Fiji team. There's a lot of uh, new players, and um, you know we de we developing this team here for for 2015. A lot of them have uh, you know had the exposure that was needed, um, and uh, you know I'm really I'm really happy with the results today. I thought they did pretty well, considering that uh, you know this is a development squad. With doping rife in international sports, the Oceania Regional Anti-Doping Association, otherwise known as ORADO, is taking steps to ensure that drugs do not spoil sports in the region. Fifty athletes from seven different sports were tested over the last nine days, and ORADO believes this is the right step if doping is to be eradicated. The samples taken have been sent to a lab, and results will be known in a fortnight. ORADO is keeping its fingers crossed that all samples come back clean. We've conducted 50 in-competition tests. Uh, this is uh, valid from the day of day one of competition up until the end of today. Out of the 50, out of the eight sports, we've only conducted seven because beach volleyball has been excluded because it's out in Fortuna. Uh, the importance of this uh, anti-doping uh, in-competition testing is that we're trying to promote and advocate uh, doping in all its form, the fight against doping in all its form in the Oceania region. 17 players have been named to the Fiji Mbati resident squad for the Battle of the Mbati match against the Australian-based Fijians next week. Listed in the side are four survivors from the 2008 World Cup campaign. Tzale Ndadakadaka has more. This will be the official attire of the Fiji residents and Australian-based Fijians when they go head-to-head -head next week in the Vodafone Battle of the Mbati clash. This is the final hurdle for these players to make the cut in a side expected to be dominated by NRL reps. Uh, like uh, Ryan Miller, uh, Aaron Groom was also part of the 2008 uh, World Cup. Kane Evans uh, is also playing NRL, but in the under-20s. Uh, we're also looking at players like uh, Tangeli, uh, who was also a product with Marika out of the uh, World Cup Trophy, secondary school competition. The Fiji resident side features four survivors of the 2008 Rugby League World Cup campaign where they reached the semi-finals. Tony Wesele, Osea Sanrao, Semisi Tora and Sebanaya Koroi will be making a bid for a second appearance at the World Meet. And uh, I know it comes with a lot of hard work and a, a lot of sacrifice because um, there's heaps of uh, good players. I've got more players as well. This is coming up and uh, I'm really working hard on my weaknesses. Experience is something that uh, comes with uh, the years that you've been playing. But uh, what I believe in is um, even though you have uh, experience, but if you're not prepared holistically, uh, I believe uh, you'll always come short. The Australian-based Fijians underwent a trial match in Sydney today to select the 17-member squad and will arrive into the country on Monday. The trials will be held at the ANZ Stadium next Thursday. Chalendo the Kadaka, FBC Sports. That's it from Sports Tonight. Good evening. Far Mills of Fiji has become one of the first exhibitors for Trade Pacifica 2014. The event is expected to draw more than 100 exhibitors. Trade Pacifica will showcase the products and services that different companies across the Pacific have to offer for the region and the international market. As one of the largest exporters in the country, FMF is hopeful that the Trade Pacifica will develop trade leads and provide a good regional network. We are very excited because um, I think Fiji being the kind of you know location it is and the challenges we face as manufacturers or traders, um, the cost to market is very high. So if we try to market products you know just on the platform of, uh, of cost or efficiencies, it's extremely difficult. The three-day event will take place from the 2nd to the 4th of April next year. And we've got the weather girl here to give us an update. How's it going, Jen? Hi, Jackie. Taking a look at the map, we had short bouts of rain in Suva and Savusavu. The western side enjoyed a brilliantly fine day, and Lombasa had some cloudy weather, which cleared up towards the afternoon. Fiji's hidden paradise had the lowest temperature on 27. 
Capital following closely behind on 28. Bayan Lambasa shared the highest on 32 degrees. Now, we will have sunshine tomorrow, but judging from our chart here, we're also going to have clouds and showers throughout VT. That strong wind warning I mentioned yesterday is still in force for all Fiji waters. Now, if you're not from the Jet Set town and wondering what that place is behind me, it's none other than Nandi's Fantasy Island. This lovely scene was caught on camera by Avikash Lau. Kudos, Avikash, for promoting this awesome little place in the West. Thanks so much for that, Genevieve. The headlines again, 50 families in Kalsa outside Suva offer $10,000 each to relocate and make way for housing authority development. Increase in bushfires in the West worry authorities and brucellosis battle sees positive results. The poll question now and we're asking, should the new Australian government engage with Fiji quickly? Visit the FBC website to take part. Remember to send us newsworthy pictures and videos. Email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj. And that was your Wednesday night news. Join us again tomorrow at the same time. Until then, more the जहाँ हो प्यार का बसेरा और रिश्तों की खुशबू, वो है आपका अपना घर संसार। Join me on Ghar Sansar, Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. till 12 p.m. Only on Radio Fiji 2. Hope you're enjoying the music right now on Gold FM. Only the classic hits, especially if you're spending your time at home or around the office. I certainly hope you're taking it easy and enjoying the music coming your way. Well, i got a whole lot more to keep you moving and to keep you going right up until you uh, reach mock-off time. I'm Kara. Join me every weekday from 2 to 7 on the ride, only on Gold FM.